Today, we're talking about these guys. Have you ever had a run-in with head lice? It's easy to dismiss these itch-inducing insects that plagued us back in the 70s and 80s as a thing of the past. However, as well as 6 to 12 million annual cases of head lice in the United States alone show that these critters are still at large. Head lice are wingless insects that have three pairs of hooked claws that they use to grab onto and climb through our hair, sucking blood from our scalp to sustain themselves. Because their feet are shaped like this, they cannot walk well on flat surfaces, nor jump like fleas. This means that the lice generally spread through direct contact, via towels, hats, head-to-head -head contact, etc. Nevertheless, head lice can quickly conquer someone's scalp due to their astonishingly fast reproduction rate. Each day after mating, the female can lay up to 10 eggs, called nits, in someone's follicle foliage. That's two to 300 over the course of the female's lifetime. Glued to their host's hair with a strong adhesive, these nits don't easily come off in the shower. The nits hatch after seven days, growing into full adults in just eight days. Then the next generation of adults mate, continuing their circle of lice. Owing to this rapid reproduction rate, head lice can also quickly mutate, developing resistances to pediculicides at breakneck speeds. In 2015, Professor John Clark of the University of Massachusetts found that the modern head lice have already developed resistances no. to the natural insecticide pyrethin, as well as the synthetic insecticide pyrethroid. This is why some medical experts recommend that you use different pediculicides during subsequent attempts to treat head lice. This prevents the head lice from adapting to a specific pediculicide formula, safeguarding against future infections. Anyway, one interesting fact about lice is that the head lice can only live in human hair. This has to do with parasite host specificity. If, for example, a pigeon flew over your head, you wouldn't need to worry about getting bird lice because you and the pigeon are part of two very different species with two very really? different physiologies. Also, lice that live in the fur of other primates don't normally survive long on human bodies. Conversely, human head lice have a tough time surviving on pigeons or in the fur of other animals. And lice host specificity can be quite precise. Most species of bird are parasitized by a different type of lice. And even within the same bird species, there can be different types of lice that inhabit different parts of the body, such as the bird's head, torso, and wings. The same goes for people. Head lice thrive on the hair atop our heads, while crab lice set up shop in the genital hair of adults. Body lice, which lay eggs in our clothing and sleeping areas, only latch onto our bodies for a short time when they need blood. They don't come anywhere near our hair. Professor Costa of the Hebrew University of Israel explains that the reason for this phenomenon is that each type of lice has different shaped claws. For example, crab lice claws are shaped to grip thick pubic hair, so they have trouble clinging to the finer hair on our scalp. Oh, and here's a fact that may surprise you. Around 3.3 million years ago, modern crab lice ancestors may have actually come from gorillas. In 2007, Dr. David Reed analyzed the DNA of crab lice to trace their origins, and he found that about 3.3 million years ago, one of humanity's ancestors was likely infected with gorilla lice. Over millions of years of evolution, those lice became what we now know as crab lice. In fact, there are only two species in the Pythiris genus, gorilla lice and crab lice. Dr. Reed notes that modern crab lice are generally transmitted by sexual contact between humans. While theorizing that the jump from gorillas to humans 3.3 million years ago likely occurred because our two species came into contact in other ways such as humans staying in locations previously occupied by gorillas. 
So what else can we glean from this story about human evolution? That's right, it's time to take a look at the origins of human pubic hair. As you may know, humans are unique among primates in that our pubic hair usually differs from the hair on the rest of our bodies. It tends to be thick and curly, regardless of what the rest of our hair is like. Many theories have been proposed as to why our pubic hair gained these traits. But for a while, we still didn't know when we started to have this kind of pubic hair. But wouldn't you know it, crab lice helped us find the answer. And Dr. Reed went even further, arguing that the time frame during which hair disappeared from our bodies was around 3.3 million years ago, not 1.5 million. Let me explain. Humans diverged from a common ancestor with chimpanzees 6 million years ago. If our body hair began to recede, the lice on our bodies would have had less space to live in, leaving only the hair on our head and the genital area vacant for parasitizing. This is when the crab lice ancestors would have slipped off of the gorillas and filled the void. Dr. Reed's hypothesis still needs more research before it might be widely accepted, but it is certainly a novel idea. The crab lice aren't the only intriguing insects in this story. Body lice have also written a page in humanity's evolutionary history book. In 2011, evolutionary biologist Dr. Melissa Duhame analyzed the mitochondrial DNA mutation rate of head and body lice and found that body lice diverged from head lice around 80,000 to 170,000 years ago. What's really cool is that looking at the time frame when body lice originated, we can guess when humans began making and wearing clothes. And if you think about it, this makes sense. Body lice lay their eggs and reproduce on human clothing, only latching onto our bodies when they need a sip of our blood. But that begs the question, why do some head lice end up migrating to our clothes? Dr. Duhame found the reason to be a lice bottleneck of sorts. Tens of thousands of years ago when hygiene standards were poorer than they are now, head lice populations often ballooned exponentially, encouraging the lice to seek habitats other than our hair. Coincidentally, this is right around the time we started making clothes. In other words, the head lice population explosion caused by our ancestors' unhygienic environment paved the way for the introduction of body lice. Isn't it interesting how this seemingly insignificant insect has helped us solve so many mysteries in our evolution? Science is a window to the world, but I'd still avoid getting a lice infestation. This has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.